Right, hello everyone. How are we all? Good to see some familiar faces here. <clears throat> or names at least. Can you hear me okay? Is the uh, sound okay? Okay, I'm Richard. Yeah, lots of people here now already. Um, Richard Lupton, Martin Manatine, Spud, hello Spud, Russ. Good to have you here. And hello to uh, everyone, anyone that's new. Right, good. A bit rusty actually. I haven't done one of these for, God, months. Should really have carried on doing them, but um, I thought it was about time to do another one. How are we all anyway? Coping with lockdown? Right, first things first, just a bit of marketing has to be done. Um, you'll notice on display we've got a, my drink, which shouldn't be there really. We have Spicy Joe's kit here, which you can buy from spicyjoes.co.uk. Um, it's the Misty Ricardo's Essential Spice Kit and contains most of the things you need to get started with um, my cooking recipes from my books. There's a couple of omissions of things like fennel seeds and curry powder aren't in there because they're readily available and we had to keep the weight down to a certain limit. So very good deals on at spicyjoes.co.uk. Um, He's rushed off his feet at the moment and postage is a bit iffy at the moment, generally in the UK and beyond. So please be a little bit patient when ordering. I know he sends them out um, the, the next day uh, when when ordered. Um, but uh, he's very inundated, he, you know, works all hours to get this done. It's a small company, very small company. Um, so that's why I wanted to, to work with him. Uh, it's Nigel, Nigel Richards is the uh, the guy and a couple of elves. So, also at Spicy Joe's, you can buy both my books at a discounted rate, cheaper than Amazon. Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume 1 and 2 by Richard Sace, me. And if you buy both, you can get an extra saving. If you buy both and the Spice Kit, you get an even bigger saving. If you buy both books, the Spice Kit, uh, uh, masala daba, you know, those round spice containers, and um, a jar of mango chutney. It's all bundled for an incredibly good price. I can't remember exactly how much it is. It's about 40 quid, but you save a lot of money. So anyway, that's the marketing over with. Um, I'll just move these out of the way. And we'll begin very shortly. Yeah, different angle today. Yeah, I've, I've been mucking around with photography and, and angles and different tripods. I just thought it would make a change to have a different angle. Unfortunately, I can't seem to zoom this in on the um, YouTube uh, recording, which is unfortunate because I wanted to um, I wanted to sort of get up closer to the pan and you're going to see more of my kitchen than I normally would display. But we'll, we'll make do. Right, so who is cooking along? Who's cooking along for this um, Adrak ginger curry recipe? Simon Martin, if you love the washing up water, you're very, um, <laughs> you need a new hobby, mate. <laughs> uh, Richard's still working well, five o'clock, yeah. If you're a nine to five guy and you're still working, then well done to you. Okay. Jenny, Julie, you're cooking. Greg, Gary, yep, cooking, great. I'm gonna take it fairly slow, otherwise it'll be over with within about six minutes. I've heard that before somewhere, hang on. Now oh, it's a different chat completely. Uh, Goose, hello Goosey, cookie along. Right, let's get organized and move this out of the way. Okay, 
I wonder what we can do with this. We can get a better angle on that. Get it pointed a bit better. I'll try and zoom. I'll pick the tripod up and zoom in um, by hand occasionally. Yeah, okay. A drack. It's a recipe from my second book, Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume 2. And when I was creating recipes, um, I was looking at different keynote flavours and uh, I wanted sort of dishes to have some sort of characteristic or main ingredient that really shined and we made the most of them. And that's where I came up with the name of the a drac, which is, uh, I've seen it on, um, I've seen it included in the names of some restaurant dishes on menus before, but I wanted to just call it a drac, simple. Um, maybe I could have called it ginger, but that would, doesn't sound quite right, does it? But anyway, it stands for ginger. It's a Hindi word for ginger, a drac. And um, we're going to use loads of it in this one. Now, you can use any main ingredients you want. I'm using chicken tikka, which I cooked cooked yesterday. And um, we're going to use a generous amount of that in, in the uh, dish. This chicken tikka recipe, by the way, is on my website as well as in both of my books. Um, and there's, a, there's an additional chicken tikka recipe in volume two as well, um, which which is very good. So, yep, the website is mistyricardo.com, just in case you didn't know. Okay, yeah, the base is drawing a bit dry. I'm having to top up with a bit of water, I think. But okay, we've got the base gravy, which some of you may not know about this. Some of you might be new and tuning in for the first time. Uh, we're cooking a restaurant style BIR curry here and one of the key ingredients is the, what's called base gravy or base sauce or curry base uh, and this is what they use in um, the mainstream British Indian restaurants and takeaways uh, to to speed up the cooking process basically or the, it's predominantly onions with a few spices and other other bits and pieces but fundamentally it's very simple it's a foundation layer of flavour and um, it's what happens to it in the pan, which is um, the magical bit, which brings out the, the lovely flavour of the ingredients. Hello, Killian, you're 13 years old and I'm cooking recipes all by myself. Well done. I think that deserves a round of applause. Everyone. Well done. I'm chuffed. My, my um, nephew's about your age and he, he cooks it as well. Right then, without further ado, so I'm using a fairly low burner for this one. So the middle sort of ring of standard gas hob. Normally I'd use this one here um, for, for cooking because it's higher, you get better heat, better caramel caramelization and it's quicker. But because we're not taking, we're taking it fairly slow here to demonstrate, I'm going to use this one. We should be fine. I mean, this, this uh, aluminium pan, even though it's quite, you know, it, it's quite a wide one, uh, it, but it's, it's thin and it heats up um, quickly and retains its heat. So we'll let that heat up. Hello from Liverpool, uh, Ben. Yes, hello just up the road. I think we might have a bit of a time delay. Right, so while that's heating up, we're gonna get the oil ready. Yeah, there's a good 10 second delay going on here, but that's all right. The pan's quite hot. I'm going to guesstimate about four, three to four tablespoons of oil going in the pan there. You could mix that up with um, with ghee, vegetable ghee or butter ghee, for a slightly different sort of feel to the to the curry. Slightly more creamy, creaminess. So to that. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned that this recipe I've actually put on my website, mistyricardo.com, in its entirety. So 
you can actually um, get the recipe there. So I won't sort of give you exact measurements. I'll just, you can see by eye what we're dealing with here. So to, to the oil, I'm going to add that's a bit of cassia bark. If you don't have cassia bark, you could use cinnamon stick. Cassia is a form of cinnamon, uh, which is more commonly used in, in BIR cooking, um, mainly because it's cheaper. And, but it has a nice um, sort of sweet aromatic flavour. Uh, I'm going to infuse the oil with that. Uh, if you don't have cinnamon sticks either, you can just leave, just leave it out. Now to that also, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of fennel seeds. That, that, that's optional. Some people don't like fennel. But I, I love the taste of fennel. It brings out a lovely flavour. And also in there, we've got the, the seeds from within, um, I think, three card, green cardamom pods. So what I've done is it's split the cardamom pods open and um, just sort of kind of emptied the, the, inter the interior contents in, in, in you know, to, to just use the seeds so we don't have to deal with the husks later. We've got our basic gravy nice and hot here. So to that, once the oil has been infused a little bit, you can smell the aromas. I hope you're getting on okay if you're cooking alongside here. You can smell some great flavours coming out. We're going to put in some onion which has been fairly thickly sliced you could chop it up really thin if you want but for this one I, I think just having a little bit different there are many ways you can chop onions and why not take advantage of that you can end up having curries which all have the same texture if you use you know the same type of chopping for each one we want to cook that down The green pepper, that's about half a green pepper. Hello, um, hello, Greg. Hello, Paul. Hello, everyone who's just joined. And just to recap, we're cooking a, a curry from my, my second book, Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, volume two, called The Adrap, which is basically heavy on, on ginger, lots of fresh ginger in it. Taking it nice and slow, so I can demonstrate. base gravy is reducing down a little bit too much you should really add when you add base gravy to it when making a curry you should have it nice and thin like this sort of semi-skim milk type consistency you don't want it too thick i find if you if you put it in when it's too thick it, it doesn't it goes sort of a wrong texture and it doesn't really reduce down prop in the in the same way just find it's overall better to, to do it like that when it's thin. Now I'm itching to use a metal spoon uh, instead of the, the wooden one. I just enjoy cooking with metal more, but I know that the sound will really irritate people to start scraping the, the, the metal spoon on the pan. So that's why I'm using a, a wooden spoon. But what we're doing really is just softening the onions up, maybe get the, get the edges browned a little bit. It takes, takes time, it's worth, worthwhile taking your time with onions. Favourite curries, people?
How many is this book? Good question. This recipe, like most of my recipes in my books, will feed one to two people. It's trying to get you the same amount of food you would get in a, a takeaway, you know, in the, in the foil containers or the plastic tubs. So you have, um, you know, it's a, it's a generous portion. Uh, one person could eat it if they were very hungry. Um, but otherwise, you know, up to two. I've had some people say they can feed four with my recipes, but it must be very, very small people with very small appetites. Good choices, lamb madras, lamb jalfrezi, prawn potato, nagabuna. Hello, David Leakey and Mel cooking along in Bradford. Blake says, can you say hi, he's recovering from not? Yes, hi, hi Blake. I wish you a speedy recovery. And if, um, if Richard's curries are as good as what I think they are, then I think that'll help you along the way. By the way, ginger is actually very good for you. So back to the pan, we've got some nice um, browning going on. I think they're almost ready for um, ginger garlic paste. We're going to add about a teaspoon and a half of that. And we're also going to add in a good, a good amount of um, finely chopped ginger. Well, it's only not really finely chopped, but sort of in nice little chunks like that. The idea is that you get a little one in every bite and it sort of gives you a little burst of flavour. We're going to put a, a good amount of that in. <laughs> yeah, Richard, get in, get in one cut. Help him to recovery with uh, a ginger curry. All right, some new names here. I see Tony. Hello, Tony. Tony Potter. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. So you know what, I'm going to turn the heat down just a touch so I can talk a bit more. That garlic is going to burn otherwise. Right then, I think it's time for the spices. The powder spices going in. We've got Kashmiri chilli powder, uh, kasuri methi, um, mixed powder, uh, a bit of salt and a bit of garam masala. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to fry the spices before adding any further liquid. To bring the best flavour out. Get rid of the raw, raw, rawness of it. By the way, cheers everyone. I'm, I'm uh, drinking uh, some organic local apple juice, which is very delicious. And there's not a drop of any alcohol in it. cooking over nicely what I'm going to do is just so the spices don't burn give it a little bit longer to cook and I'll add just a drizzle of base gravy in there and turn the heat back up to where it was before question you've got yourself one of these pans yesterday uh do you season it no aluminium pans don't need seasoning you just you know just wash them as per normal you're fine and yes um spicy joe you can get my mixed powder in spicy joe's 
I mentioned earlier that, um, that I have an essential spice kit on sale for sale at Spicy Joe's, which includes um, the vast majority of things you need to get started cooking my recipes. And that includes mixed powder. You can also get refills of mixed powder, both um, my original mixed powder recipe from volume one, Indian restaurant curry at home volume one, and the uh, Bazaar, Bazaar mixed powder from volume two. Right, that's had quite enough time cooking. We're gonna add about five or six tablespoons of tomato puree, which has been diluted with water, right? So it's not five or six tablespoons of tomato puree. It's about a quarter of that content, but mixed with water. You can use passata, five or six tablespoons of passata, or you can blend some fresh or tinned tomatoes up and put it in. I, I like tomato puree, good quality one. I've always used White Tower, the brand, which is what a lot of the restaurants and takeaways do. Uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. It's, um, it's just superior. I'm going to cook that off for 30 seconds or so. Then we're going to add about 75 millilitres of base gravy, about that much. You get the idea. Not a huge amount. We're going to add it in stages as ever. So the heat can remain quite high. It can reduce down and caramelise on the pan. I'm going to turn the heat up now to uh, as high as it will do on this particular ring. Because we've got a lot, we've got more stuff in the pan now, so therefore the temperature has dropped. So to get it back up again, you need a higher, higher heat. And what will happen, we won't fiddle with it, we'll just leave it uh, after stirring once. And uh, what will happen is you'll get some, a little bit of oil separation going on. Let's see if I can, I can move this, um, show you in more, more detail. You see slight oil separation coming along. And you've got these nice sort of craters beginning to form around the edges and the start of the caramelization you see the sides of the pan and that's why it's important to leave it otherwise you when you stir it you you kind of release the heat and it so sort of, you have to fall back to where you were and start again so i'm going to leave this for another 30 seconds or so i'm going to add more base gravy and then some more ingredients uh, white tower tomato puree you can get in asian supermarkets mostly there are other alternative brands. I'll show you a tin. It comes in tins. You can't get it in like little tubes or anything. Okay, there we have it. White Tower. That's the sort of smallest tin they do. I know the catering size ones are a lot bigger, uh, but uh, you can get alternative brands. I haven't really tried other brands. I know there are others available, uh, which might or may not be as good or better. But that's one I use. No, I'm, I'm not obviously not any commission for this or anything. It's just what uh, I, I trust and use. Uh, however, having said that, occasionally if I run out, I'll use a, a cheap one from Aldi or Lidl, something like that, and I find it completely acceptable. So I, I think uh, you're okay which, uh, you know, with your, with your bog standard cheap stuff. And while I've been rabbiting away, we need to, uh, need to put a bit more base gravy in. And more ingredients. Chicken tikka goes in. Um, we're going to put the coriander stalks in now because they're a little bit tough and they need a bit of time to cook. We've got lots of flavour. It's not easy doing this one-handed. So we're going to stir that and scrape all the lovely caramelised back bits back in and then we're going to leave it. And what I'm doing here with the base gravy, I'm just going to top it up with a little water because it's actually dried out a bit. I want it still quite thin. Right, so you get the idea. Just sort of let that, let that sizzle away. 
Right, I'm just going to have a read of what people have been saying because I've been focusing on that. I'll turn the heat down temporarily just so I can talk. Hello, Julie. Julie Sharp, hi. Miss Blackburn made a file today and you're still here to uh, tell the tale. Uh, so yeah, the White Tower Formation Supermarkets, you might be able to get it online, you'll probably get ripped off. Okay. How many people have we got? Oh, we've got almost a hundred people, that's good. <coughs> I think the timing's not ideal because it's uh, about 5 p.m. Maybe I should do it later next time. No, that's the thing. It's um, When you get your white tower tins, it's, it comes with a ring pull metal top. Um, and it's a big problem for me you know i don't want to mess around with cellophane sealing it i find that when you buy you know when you buy butter ghee tins of butter ghee they come with they come with a lid i'll show you they come with a lid yeah and when you finish with the butter ghee you can just retain the lid and you can use it as a top for your your tomato paste okay there you go always learning something on this channel aren't you so let's see where we are with the curry Oh, and by the way, it's not in the recipe, but I'm going to add some fresh chilli because I I saw the look of these. And I know there are only mild supermarket chilies, but I like the colour and the flavour a lot. If you like this hotter, by the way, you can add whatever you want in terms of chilli content. I only added, uh, I think it was about a teaspoon of Kashmiri chilli powder for myself. But if you, if you want it hotter, you can add as much chilli powder earlier on uh, as we did um, at that stage. So I'm going to put the heat back up a little bit. I'm going to add, this time, about, it's about 150 millilitres approximately. That's about one and a half of my labels. Heat's on full. I'm going to let that you see what's happened there by stirring it it's all quietened down the heat's escaped and it needs to go back to temperature so that's why we leave it yeah and no doubt that you could add uh, Lots of different condiments to this, like chilli pickles. Greg, I think, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit of Naga or, or whatever whatever brand you prefer going in. We're also going to add to this a bit of mango chutney. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some pineapple chunks in that classic combination of ginger and pineapple as well as the green peppers. It just works so well together. But for this one, I'm just going to add some mango chutney for just that little bit of sweetness. And I'm going to leave that for a bit. I'm going to show you another close-up now. Okay. And you can see these little craters were bubbling. And on the sides of the pan, you've got some crusty caramelization forming. It's exactly what you want. I'm going to leave this. And if you're worried about it getting too dry, 
you know, that's what the base gravy is for. You can just li literally top it up with, with extra base. Or indeed, if you've run out of base, a bit of water. So in a, in a 30 seconds or so, I'm going to scrape this and you'll see how it's adhered to the bottom of the pan and perform, creates a lovely, um, what's the word, frond. Oops. Um, Lynn, there is, uh, the pan actually, um, I got this from a company called Concept Cuisine. There's a, a link to this pan on my website from the supplies page. So if you go to mistyricardo.com, and look in the supplies page it's under concept cuisine they do some really good uh, little bowls and dishes and they actually supply the, the restaurant tray but so uh, this one was only about six quid i think you have to spend a certain amount for free delivery it's not that cheap but if you're going to make a, an order a very, very good value but you have to make a sort of reasonable order to get free delivery right let's stir you see i'm stirring it now you see all that lovely, lovely crusty stuff at the bottom what we're talking about and mix that in yep you know add the rest of base gravy I've got here so while I've been nattering away this has been reducing down and I like it a little bit of, I like a little bit of sauce with this curry so again once again we've added stuff to the pan temperatures dropped as because we've stirred and we need to bring it back up. And I'll add a nice handful of coriander. Lovely fresh flavours going on with this, this particular curry. I'm just going to leave that bubbling, bubbling away. You don't have to have, that, have it on really high heat if you don't want. You can sort of like let it sort of do its business. Most of the work's been done already with the caramelisation. Okay, I'm going to put you back. I need two cameras. Cheers, Greg. Yeah, it just look it just look nice and it smells amazing. You've got a lovely colour on this. Uh, I think tomato puree has got a lovely it's got a richer, deeper colour to it that looks more attractive in curries. And the cashmere chili powder will give a, a little bit of a redness as well as the chicken tikka, of course, it's been it's got some food colouring in it. Well, which imparts some of the some of the colour, but it looks looks nice, I must admit. <laughs> okay we're nearly done now you could if you, if you like a thicker curry you could just reduce this down further so it's thicker kabuna but uh, i do like a little bit of sauce also when you when stuff is hot in a pan it, it's it's more um it, it's 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 thinner than it, it it would be when it's cooled down. It's more voluminous, if that's a word. So that's something to bear in mind that even though you think it's um, too thin, that once you've sort of plated it up, it actually will will be thicker than it looks in the pan. Oh, cheers, Gavin. Just bought my two books. Nice one. Well, I hope you get them tomorrow and with Amazon. Prime. I don't know how, what the Amazon situation is at the moment, but I can't imagine they're doing daily deliveries the next day. Okay, we're done. I think that's it. All right, it's time to plate up.
Right, I'm going to give you a choice. Which bowl do you want me to put it in? These these bowls um, I got from Concept, Concept Cuisine, by the way. They're very, um, very sturdy. That's what they use in the restaurants. Double line balls. Retains the heat. So let me know. Do you want... You want the balsy bowl or the um, the rice dish to serve up the curry in? Oh, and by the way, just get rid of the cassia bark from the pan. Mmm, tastes nice. Balsy, okay, we'll do the balsy bowl. I will zoom on, in on this in a minute. For now. That lovely caramelisation at the bottom, scrape it all off. Of flavour. Okay, and to garnish, let me see, to garnish, I'm going to get a better camera angle. Sorry about this, just hang on. Okay, that's better. Uh, who wants to lick the pan? Anthony, you can do if you want. Yeah. You want to lick the pan? Yep. Yeah. Okay, you're done. Good. Right, to garnish, we've got a few more little chunks of ginger. The raw taste will sort of like give a little sharpness to, uh, to it when you bite into it. Ugh, useless at garnishing. Oh, it looks, looks okay, doesn't it? Um, just a touch of coriander on top as well. Sound looking good. Now, how does it taste? Right. Here we go. That ginger. Ugh. All right, that's good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's really good. <clears throat> the warmness, of that ginger, it's not overpowering. It kind of fills your mouth with flavour. It's a very slight burn at the back of your throat, but it's a very welcome sensation. Well, there you go. I'm not going to fiddle about with this anymore because I want to take a photo of it. Like that, yeah, very nice. If I don't say, if I do say so of myself, that was that was very nice. And I hope you try it. And. Feel free to add the optional pineapple, if you wish. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in, and maybe we'll do another one soon. Has anyone got any preferences what they'd like me to cook next time? Thanks guys, lava storm. Um, Greg, you want me to cook the lava storm? All right, we'll do a very hot curry. Our next video will be a very, very hot curry. Okay, thanks for coming again. I'll tune out now. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Oh, and don't forget, Indian Restaurant Curry at Home Volumes 1 and 2, available at spicyjoes.co.uk and Amazon and all the others. Thank <laughs> you.